Welcome to FS Podcasts. We are a student initiative from Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, a business school located in Frankfurt, Germany. In our podcast, we like to bring different guests with interesting background to talk to us and share their opinion on various diverse topics. Hi, and welcome to this new episode of FS Podcast. My name is Lea, and today I have the pleasure to interview Marianne Yu. Hi, May. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, to wrap it up, you were originally from Lyon. Yes. You studied there in EFAP, a communication school, then moved to New Zealand for a year and ended up in Frankfurt to work for a French company as a communication manager. Yeah. You arrived in Frankfurt three and a half years ago and realized you were missing the French culture. You then decided with some friends to try to meet other French people in Frankfurt and organized an event that you communicated on Facebook. You saw the potential of it and decided to do, to do this event every month and shortly after turned it into a company. Mm -hmm. You are now the co-founder of Apero Frenchie with your sister Elise and organize events in Frankfurt, but also Munich, Düsseldorf, Paris, Medellin and Bogota. Yes. <laughs> cool. I'm thrilled to interview you today because I love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, so you get it. It's exactly what we are doing now and uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk about what I do. This is great. So, to start, first question, as most of our auditors are not French, how would you describe what's a French apéro? Yeah, of course. So, apéro Frenchy, so to say the, the name, uh, is coming from apéro, which means it's a short name of aperitif which means drinks, pre-drinks, um, having a good time, usually before dinner or before lunch. It's a time we French people get together um, before sharing some food, basically. Okay. And what made you think that this casual meeting could actually become a company? Um, well, basically, I had no idea about that. So mm -hmm. we, as you said, like we really started to do that um, for fun, like uh, to meet some uh, French people here in Frankfurt because we were based here and we wanted to meet some, uh, some other French people and French speakers. And uh, I think it's important when you are not living in your country. And uh, after a few months, um, yeah, for sure it took some months, but um, it became, became a company now. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And you're happy with it? Yeah, of course. It's yeah. not super easy every day, for sure. But um, as, soon as, as long as you like uh, what you do, you're happy with your job and you don't have any troubles with Monday. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Um, so you co-founded Apero Frenchy with your sister? Was yeah. it always an evidence? Not at all. Actually, not at all. Um, I mean, like, I think it was, it's still smooth and uh, we are happy to work together because, like, uh, we are really different and I think we, are, we fit together. But yeah, no, at the beginning, um, I had no idea that I was going to work with her. And, uh, and I started this company by myself and then she joined me because for her it was an evidence yes, to join me because she liked, what, she liked what I was doing and she liked the events and she liked traveling and so this is how she joined me because um, she was a bit, I think, tired of working in a financial company mm -hmm. and uh, she needed some new um, adventures, you know, so yeah. yeah. So now, yeah, now it's, uh, it looks like an evidence, yeah, but okay. at the beginning, no. Yeah. And so do you work together every day? Yes, we do. Yeah? Well, basically, we are not in the same office since I'm based here in Frankfurt and now she's back in Paris. Okay. But yeah, we, we call each other every day and uh, we text each other every day, you know, like it's a startup <laughs> life, so we are always in touch together. Okay, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as you're both French, was it easy to start in Germany? Uh, to be honest, no. No, it was not since um, I... Well, I still don't speak very well German. Uh, all the administration, uh, papers, um, all the back office thing is not super easy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Especially for me, because it's not my thing, <laughs> even in French. And uh, she was in touch, she was in, um, in charge of the back office. So it was easier for me. But mm -hmm. yeah, the, when you when we're not fluent, it's, it's not easy. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it took some time. Uh, I learned a bit of German, German and uh, so now it's, uh, it's better. But yeah, at the beginning, it was, uh, it was not easy at all. Okay, yeah, I understand. And so are you a French or a German company? So basically, we, are, we were a German company, uh, Uge. And um, as I said, 
said as it was not easy and uh, it took a lot of time and uh, when you have a startup it, even in France it's not easy to build it and uh, so we decided to create a French company mm -hmm. and now the Apéro Frenchy is, uh, is based in France. Okay, so your company is French under French laws mm -hmm. and like how is it possible, how is it even made possible that you just come to Germany and make business here? Uh, basically, the um, uh, basically the um, the head is uh, in France, mm -hmm. and uh, we have like different uh, locations locations now okay. since we want to, to to make it international. So we have like a firm in Germany, and we'll have some firm firm firms yeah firms in um, in uh, every country. But yeah, the basement is in France. Okay, so it's like the mother company is in France, and then you have. The run, exactly, the you get it. You okay. Get it. Yeah. Um, what background do you have that helped you be where you're at today? Like previous experiences, your school, your life before, what made you be here today? So I actually studied uh, communication and events. So mm -hmm. I think I was, uh, it was what I wanted to do. Then I made my internship, my biggest internship uh, in a French company, a sneakers company called Veja and I was in charge of the PR and um, events so this is uh, how I realized I was made for that, you know mm -hmm. and uh, so I knew that I wanted to do uh, communication events but I didn't know in what exactly and when I went to New Zealand I actually realized that I was missing my French culture and um, when you're living so far away from your country Sometimes you want to meet some other French people, or yeah, you know, like I think it's the same for every cultures. Yeah. And you realize that you are actually by yourself. You don't have your family. You don't have your your close friends, and you have to build a new life. You know. So I think it's that's what made me realize that uh, I wanted to do something with that. Mm -hmm. And when I came to Frankfurt, for me it was super important to organize those events because I know what is it. I know the struggle of being by yourself, and I know. What is it when you need some friends, when you need to hang out with some people like you, you know, like so, yeah. And this is how I realized I could mix, you know, communication events and all this part of being expats. Yeah. Okay. Um, you organized a crowdfunding campaign on Kiss Kiss Bank Bank. Can you tell me more about this way of getting founded and why you did it that way? Yeah, sure. So yeah, we did it last year, actually last summer, um, because I think crowdfunding is actually a good um, way to, to raise money for a young startup because you just ask your friends, your closest, your closest friends, your family, uh, everyone wants to actually support you and they don't know how they can support you except going to your events or you know, like uh, when they are not living in the same country. For them, it's a, it's a way to show you the help, you know, like the supports. And um, we, yeah, we actually had a lot of support for, for this crowdfunding campaign and we were really, really, really happy about that. And uh, for sure, for us, you know, it's, it's helping on anything, you know, like, um, and everything, sorry, like it's helping like with the, the travel cost, like to helping on every expense, you know, like we do every day. So yeah, yeah it, it was really like um, a big, a good thing for us, yeah. Okay, that's great. Mm. And I'm not sure, but is crowdfunding, like if you reach what you were aiming for, then you have it. But if you don't, then you don't get anything or not? So it depends on the platforms. But uh, yeah, I think um, if we were not uh, reaching the, 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 the amount we asked for, mm -hmm. yeah, it was like uh, cancelled and everyone gets refunded. But okay. uh, yeah, so it depends on the platform you are doing it. We okay. were doing it in Kiss Kiss Bank Bank and uh, it was the way they were working. So you would recommend this one? Yeah, actually, it yes, yes. Well. It's, a, it's a really good thing and they're also promoting your brand and what you do. So, yeah, I think uh, I recommend it, yeah. Okay. Definitely. And do you know who participated? Like, do you know that it's mostly friends and family or do you also know if like some random people just participated? Yeah, we know every single person okay. <laughs> because there is a name and of course I think it's important as well to know who helped us, yeah, you know. So yeah, of course we have like our closest friends, our family, um, but also we were really touched because like uh, there was a lot of people we barely knew, you know, like... Uh, and uh, for us it's like wow you know like uh, some people from Munich or some people from random cities like they I think they know Apero Funchi because they're probably customers but like they yeah they gave us money and we we're like wow okay cool you know so for us it's like cool you know so we yeah. do that and uh, they are helping us so it means for yeah. them it's something else you know they believe in you it's, yeah exactly yeah. so now we were really touched about that we were not expecting for some people you know we were like wow you know it's uh, it's uh, 
gaat iets verlegen. Ja. Nice. Makes you feel good. Ja, exactly. Ja. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear. <laughs> Um, did you invest a lot of money from your own pocket? Yes, 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 we did. And um, yeah, so basically um, we have some savings. So I put all my savings in this, uh, in this company and my sister as well. And uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think it's important because like it also helps you like when you know that you put all your money, I mean like pretty much all your savings. In your company, that is your motivation, you know, yeah. like, uh, and now you know that if you don't do anything and if you don't want to do something for your company, it means like... It's going down. Exactly, yeah, exactly, you get it. So, yeah, for us, like, yeah, for sure, we, we put a lot of money inside this company and, um, yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It cannot be like that, you know, like, but the thing is, like, it's a service, so I think it's um, it's cheaper than a product, you know, so we don't have to invest in, like, uh, production and stuff. Yeah, definitely. So for us, it's, um, it's yeah, it's a, it's an investment investment so for sure, but it's not like uh, we weren't producing something, you yeah. know, so it's a lot of money, but, yeah, you know, like, uh, it's not that much. So what are your main costs? Well, I mean, I would say everything. So literally everything. It can be like the rent of the of the office because now yeah. we have different offices. Travels because we travel we travel a lot. Yeah, we see um, that. Yeah, a and um, I would I don't know that travels and um, well, salaries. Salaries for of sure. Course. Yeah, of course, because now we are three person. Yeah, you hired someone, and uh, yeah. So yeah. basically, yeah. So you need Office this travels <laughs> and uh, salaries, so yeah. <laughs> Was there anything scaring you before starting? Of course, of course. The way, like, when you quit your job and uh, you, you cannot leave, you know, like, if it's not working, you, are, you don't have any money, you don't have any salary at the end of the month. So for sure, it was scaring. Uh, so I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you, yeah. but you started your, this company But were you still working for another company or you completely quit your job and started that? Exactly what I did. So oh. I, I started like those events when I was still working in this company. But then at some point I quit my company and my, my first job and I started to launch Happy Old Frenchie. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Like for so you had no income. Exactly. No okay. income. So wow. I just have like some savings and that's it. So I was literally freaking out, I would of say. Course. I was really excited because like when it's like something you, you are doing for yourself, it's like really exciting. But still, you know, like the, this thing about the salary at the end of the month is like, wow, you know, like it's a big change. And uh, so I gave me I gave me three months and I was like, okay, if it's not working in three months, I'm going to start to find a new job, which mm -hmm. is probably easy because as soon as you as long as you speak, you know, like different languages, like you can maybe find something. But yeah, I, I really wanted to, to, to keep yeah. going, you know, so I gave me three months. And after three months, I realized that I, I could do something, you know, like it, it was working and mm -hmm. uh, I had some incomes. Yeah, basically, no, it was not like huge incomes at the beginning, but yes, and uh, yeah, so it was my biggest fear, and uh, it's still, of course, you know, it's always your, your fear, you know, when you're of an course. entrepreneur, but yeah. your business, mm -hmm. it's normal. Yeah. <laughs> Who are your main competitors in your different locations? Uh, well, I would say the after work part because like we are working in b2c and in b2b so mm -hmm. in b2c it's the after work part for the expat community i think we have plenty of competitors you know like i think in every country there is community organizing events and after work for you know to gather people um yeah i think international would be our main competitor because they are organizing after work as well for the international com um, uh, people mm -hmm. everywhere in the world and they are big they are really big Um, so yeah, that would be our biggest. Mm. Are you are you trying to work with them sometimes or? I think we could actually. Yeah, we um, we had the talk with some people working there. It never happened, but I think yeah, we could do something because of course it's fitting together. It's yeah, all going expat, you yeah. know, like a, a networking events. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we could do something. So far, we haven't done anything yet, but we're still open. <laughs> yeah, of course. So by launching in different locations, so you are now in. Frankfurt, Munich, Düsseldorf, Paris, Medellin, Bogota. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What are the biggest threats and opportunities in like in the different countries? Mm, well, I would say uh, the fact to travel is like you you discover a lot of uh, of cultures, different mm -hmm. cultures, especially when you go to Colombia, for example, it's like really different than Munich, Frankfurt, or well, Germany in general. 
Uh, so yeah, there is like a super international community. That it's really exotic over there, you know. So yeah. it's like it's it's really interesting. And I would say in Germany so far, it's um, yeah, our customers like need to hang out, need to meet people because like no one came here. Uh, I mean, like, they came for a job, you know, like, so basically they probably don't know a lot of people when they arrive. And so first it's like, a, it's like, and I think it's like a positive thing because we know that the market is really in need, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and how did you think of starting in Colombia? Because Europe, so Germany, France, okay. But <laughs> Colombia, it's so far. Why there? Yeah, I know. I, it looks like it's out of nowhere. Because <laughs> <laughs> Spain yeah, would be closed, yeah, but Colombia, yeah, yeah. so far. Well, so to tell you the truth, um, so when my sister joined me in the company, she was just coming back for a six months uh, tour. I mean, like um, travel in Colombia and well in South America. Okay. And this is how she realized that she wanted to quit her job and she wanted to join me because she is in love with South America. And she thought about that. She was like, okay, I want to do something with South America. I can maybe do something with Apero Frenchie. So let's do that, you know. And she was the one like who pushed me to launch in uh, Colombia. Okay. And uh, it's actually, it's not out of nowhere. It's just like super far away, you know, like, but uh, there is a big French community as well and international community. So yeah, when you think about that, we are here in Germany and out of nowhere, we are launching in Colombia. So yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, yeah, and if you think about long term, we would love to be kind of everywhere you know so colombia would be like the exotic part <laughs> and um and yeah so yeah we are really happy about this new country now yeah okay and does it mean that you have a team there in colombia yeah well a team it's maybe a big word <laughs> but we have ambassadors um one ambassador actually in bogota and one in medellin And um, ambassador, it's a name to say represent, you know, like, so they work with us uh, as a part of the team and they are helping us developing the project over there. Mm. Okay. So we don't travel to Colombia every week, you know. Okay, <laughs> yeah, easier for you. Um, are you planning on extending even more? Do you have any more locations in mind? Yes, of course. Like, uh, yeah, we, we would love to. So basically, we have like three new locations we want to launch soon to be London. In oh. June, uh, Amsterdam, uh, Zurich and uh, Lisbon. So yeah, Lisbon is uh, so wow. fourth. Yeah. No, yeah. If we think about long term, we want to develop it like uh, pretty much everywhere if we can. Yes. Okay, that's great. <laughs> like step by step. So we'll see. Mm. Yeah, great to mm. hear. Well, good luck for that. Thank you very much. And hopefully it will work. I'm sure it will. <laughs> Um, I found on your website this sentence, we aim to satisfy cravings for French art de vivre by, by mingling and introducing our customers to new places and new brands. So how do you find all those super great places? Because every time you have a, a, an event, it's always in crazy locations, it always looks mm. so nice and that's places that we wouldn't go to normally, mm. or not most of us. So how do you find those places? Uh, basically, uh, we want to find like, how do you say, like those nice places, trendy or like uh, places you would never know by yourself. So that's your job. Uh, that's our job, you know. So we are trying to to find by any way, you know, like uh, either it's like friend of friends who are saying like, oh yeah, there is this location, or it's our network, or you know, like so we do it by ourselves when we go for a drink. And we're like, oh wow, this place is awesome, you know. So mm -hmm. it's always about that, you know. So it's I think it's natural. I don't know, like we. We try our best to find new places and it can be like co-working space, it can be bars, it can be like private secret places, you know, like it's, yeah. we want to make it original, you know, like to spoil our customers. Yeah, yeah it's really nice because you arrive in a location you would have mm. never seen before yeah. or never been to. Last time we were in this great hotel, I don't think I would have had drinks there. So it's really nice. Yeah, that's our to be able yeah, to go there for sure. Yeah, because like uh, you could pass by and never realize that there is like a nice place, and yeah. that's our job as well to promote all those places that no one, I mean, no one knows, because like for us it's kind of brand activation for them as well. You mm -hmm. know, like once uh, our people go there, like they will never, uh, they will maybe come back every day. You know, so yeah. or every week. You know, and oh. for them it's like new customers. So. Of course, or new yeah. hotel, and the next time they're gonna be yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. They, they can nice also time. like yeah be yeah. also like uh, customers of the hotels when while they are traveling. You know, like it can be everything for us. We want to promote all those places. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> okay, um, if you keep growing the way you do. 
you won't be able to attend every event, right? So are you thinking of doing franchises, maybe in the future destinations? Yes, 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 yes. As you said, uh, so until now, I'm, um, for me it's, uh, and for us, actually, it's important to be everywhere because like for us, we want to keep an eye on everything mm -hmm. and uh, see what's going on. But yeah, for sure, at some point, uh, we, we could, we, we won't go anywhere, you know, like, so franchise uh, makes sense, yes. So far, we haven't done anything yet, but yeah, it's an idea that we want to push. And yeah. uh, I think it's, a, it's really interesting to think about that as well. Yeah. Yeah, because mm. what we didn't say for now is that she is going to mm. every event. Yeah. <laughs> so if she has one in Paris and the next week in Medellin and then in Dusseldorf, she will be at the three parties. So she's traveling a lot. Yeah, I do actually, but yeah. yeah. I, well, I mean, it's nice, nice <laughs> but it's hard. Yeah, and if you, try, if you try to be everywhere, then it will be even more complicated. Mm, it is, yeah. So we'll see. We give time times. Yeah, that's good. Um, did you get a lot of outside help? Like consulting consulting companies coming from the outside to help you or I don't know like friends and family telling you how to do things or help you try to find ideas mm -hmm. or was it really made from the inside well um, regarding the consulting company I would say no um, but it's most about yeah, exactly like friends or you know like even customers who are coming to our events and that we meet them there and they're like oh yeah I like your idea and I, actually I was thinking maybe you can do that and I have a friend who, do, who does mm -hmm. it you know like and uh, maybe he can help and you know like it's all about networking at the That's end so, so nice. we have a lot of advice actually yeah, about like those people you know like who are actually coming to our events and they like it so first it's actually really nice to see that uh, also some random people that you don't know like you are not uh, basically your friends or family can help you and um, that they are so happy to help and support you in the way they can it's but it's nice to see because it means that you're creating such a friendly environment mm -hmm. that they don't have anything to do with you or your company but because they just feel happy to be there mm -hmm. they just want to bring you something more maybe it's so nice mm -hmm. to hear yeah, it's yeah really nice. exactly really, really happy. friendly atmosphere yeah. it's yeah. very nice to hear <laughs> okay hard question now tell me what if an exterior investor was offering you to buy a company what okay you can never exactly know what mm. you would do But what do you think you would, how would you react? What would you say? Um, I think, yeah, it's, as you said, like, it's hard to, to imagine uh, what you're going to say. But, um, yeah, of course, like, as a startup, you always need money. You always need, you know, like, uh, investors. And mm -hmm. you're, always, you're always in this, you know, phase, like, uh, yeah. you, when you're growing up. When you're growing, sorry. And, um, and, yeah, so I would say, well, at the moment, I would need more times because like for me, it's still a baby and uh, we still have a lot of things to do. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a kind of frustration, you know, like at the moment, because like I still need to put a lot of efforts on yeah. this company. I still need to push myself hard, you know. So for me personally, I don't know if you ask my sister, but, yeah. <laughs> but I think she's thinking the same. Um, yeah, we would need to think about that. It's really, uh, it's a great thing. It would be a great opportunity for us as well, for sure. But yeah, for us, we are still in the first steps, you know, like we still need to grow. So yeah. give us some time. <laughs> okay. Okay, recently on your social media, you said as a joke that you were thinking of moving to Colombia. But is that actually something you're considering or are you still planning on living in Germany? <laughs> Actually, I'm laughing because, yeah, I really love, love, love this country. It's been such a good discovery for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm really in love about, like, this Latin culture, you yeah. know, like the Spanish speakers. And, you know, like, because I, I do speak Spanish, and for mm -hmm. me it's easier than German, to be honest. And, yes, I would totally be there. I know it's far away. I know there is, like, my company base here in Europe, so it would be kind of hard. But, yes, I was thinking about that, and um, I'm still thinking, actually. Um, I will see. I think maybe like for a short term, you know, maybe not for my whole life. But yeah, I think like, uh, and especially if we need to develop in South America. Yeah. <laughs> and when I made this joke, everyone, uh, everyone thought I was really um, serious about serious. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, I was so because, yeah, exactly. First. No one realized it was an April Fool joke yeah. because uh, yeah, it was actually a April Fool, Fool joke. And, um, and yeah, because I was always uh, saying, oh my God, I love this country so much. I want to live there, you know, like it's such yeah. like, you know, like the art of Ville is actually, wow, crazy. People know how to party and people know how to live, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's something I really like, you know, the spontaneity, like the, yeah, everything about those, those people. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Great to hear. I want to go. It's so warm and you know, exactly. You yeah. should definitely go there. It's awesome. Yeah. 
despite yeah. uh, everything we can hear about uh, this country, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's it, it's worth it. Yeah. Because mm. so yeah, from the outside, sometimes we can think maybe it's a bit dangerous. I know. Is it? Do you feel no, that when actually, you're there? Actually, um, that's the image you have from the outside. But uh, as soon as you go there, you will realize that you are safe. I mean, of course, you need to be careful. But I think it's like. You know, every city you have to be careful yeah, of going. You know, like I could say the same in Paris. You know, like in Frankfurt, you, yeah, exactly. Or even Frankfurt. But yeah, if you're careful about what you do, and if you don't go out by yourself during the night, you know, so you're safe. I mean, like uh, people are really welcoming, really happy to see tourists, and uh, yeah. So no, no, no. Don't listen to what they say. Yeah. <laughs> um. What would be your best scenario for the next years of Apero Frenchy? Well, um, mm -hmm. expanding. I think for me, it's like our main thing is like to expand um, internationally. So first of all, Europe and to have a, a big community in, uh, in Europe and then to grow uh, worldwide. <laughs> yeah, it would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. So cool. <laughs> That's really nice to hear. Okay, we're gonna finish with some spontaneous short questions. Okay, tell me. So, what's the best way to start your day? Uh, coffee. <laughs> coffee. And the best way to finish it? Wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Okay. <laughs> well, I would say the same. Um, what do you hate? Uh, grumpy people. <laughs> what's the most important quality to have? Um, Good question. Spontaneity. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. The best advice someone gave you? Um, do whatever you love. And very last, a question we love to ask in this podcast. Is there anyone you look up to? Uh, yeah, good question, actually. I don't think I'm looking up to someone especially, but I think... Um, Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking up at all those women who are like entrepreneur or CEO or running big companies or even like small companies actually. As soon as like they're running something and they're independent and you know, like they, they believe in themselves. For me, it's like such a, a good model, you know, like I think it's super inspiring. And uh, yeah, so that would be my answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And do you have anywhere where you can find those women? Like do you have a special magazine, a website, a podcast mm, that you listen to? Not really actually. Yeah, there is like in well, especially in in, uh, in Paris, um, yeah, there is it's called Mona, you know, like it's like from um, my little uh, my little Paris. Okay. So there is a lot of network of uh, entrep women and entrepreneurs, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't have a, no, sorry. <laughs> I don't have a special magazine, a special magazine. Okay. Well, thank you very much for making yourself available for me today. Pleasure. Yeah. It was a pleasure to interview you and I wish you and your company all the best. May it continue to grow and to make you happy. No, thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye.